Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is Jax and today I'll be talking through my process of painting this recent piece. This of course is a commission where I'll be drawing this delightful little dear fellow. So going into this piece I had two main ideas. Firstly, I wanted a character to be turned away and having their upper back kind of facing the viewer to show off these interesting branch spines coming off their design. The second thing I wanted to include was some sort of hanging foliage coming down from the top of the painting. Whether these were going to be leaves or flowers, I hadn't decided yet at this point, but those were the two main things I wanted to include for this piece going in. The sketch process was pretty straightforward, but what I wasn't too sure about was the lighting and colour situation. I rarely do thumbnails, but since I was struggling a bit at this point, I thought it would be helpful to just quickly render a few different value studies before I started. I didn't record the first two, but here you can see me going through the third one. I really like the sharp contrast between the light background and the character's shadowed head in the second thumbnail, but I thought it looked a bit too flat. So I thought I would introduce a bit of a light source coming somewhere from the bottom right to light up the character's right side and give everything a bit more depth. You can see I also tried to do this one side of lighting in the first thumbnail, but coming from the left side and lighting up the character's face. But this concept didn't quite click with me and would have also made it really hard to introduce the hanging foliage from on top. So I decided in the end to kind of meet halfway between the first two and we get the third and final thumbnail, which I then copied and pasted into the original full size sketched and resized it to fit. And there we have our starting values. So now onto the painting. All right, so at this point, I still wasn't too sure about the colors I wanted, but since the character isn't too colorful, I wanted to keep the overall palette pretty subdued. So this was a good opportunity to just start the painting process in grayscale. I also wanted to test out some new techniques for painting fur. Well, I guess it really isn't new, but I'm still using the same light color on dark blending in process that I've been using all along. But I've been inspired recently by some new artists. Shout out right now to Raycat and Minor Capricorn. I'll link their DeviantArt URLs in the description below. I absolutely adore the way these guys paint and render fur in their drawings and just how soft and organic they make it look. And I've been a little dissatisfied with my usual technique for painting fur. It works fine for the most part, but animals all kind of have these different fur textures and lengths and whatever. And I found that the pointy watercolor brush to create the fur tips just wasn't cutting it in some situations. Like I never really aim for realism, but I do want the fur textures I use in my paintings to look as correct for the situation as possible. And so what I did in this piece was instead of using the sharp watercolor brush to create the tufts of fur, I used a square watercolor brush. And this is actually one of the Medibang brushes you can download directly within the program by going to the cloud. You do this by clicking the little cloud option on the bottom left of the box containing all the brushes. And basically using my usual process for painting fur, I started on a darker base. And with the brush on the lighter color, I stroked in clumps of fur. And then either with the same brush or switching to a regular flat watercolor brush, I will just blend that clump of fur in with the rest of the neck. And using this square brush, you can basically create these sections of fur with much wider ends. The tufts of fur don't end on a point, rather they kind of stay spread out and end on this flat edge. And I thought this achieved a much softer look to the fur. Of course, I would then go in with a sharper watercolor brush and kind of stroke in these smaller strands of fur at the edges of these square tufts, but still ensuring I kind of maintain that overall shape of the flat end. I repeated this process all around the neck and down the back, and I wanted the curvature of the back spine to be quite obvious. Sometimes when you have characters with a lot of fluff on their neck, it can be difficult to communicate where their head is turning in relation to their body. I know I've definitely made this mistake before in the past and you kind of end up with this what looks like a disembodied head sitting on a tube wrapped in fur lining and you don't want that. So having these clear anatomical cues kind of showing where the fur parts on the body is super helpful for kind of avoiding this ambiguity. Oh, and another mistake to avoid is to have the character on the same layer as the background. I think this is pretty obvious, but clearly not for me. I tend to be over-enthusiastic when working with as few layers as possible, and sometimes that's just impractical and you realize halfway through that you need to take the lasso tool and kind of separate the character from the background.
The colouring process was pretty straightforward. I created layers on top of each of the base elements and just took the gradient tool and started pushing in and fiddling around with the different colour combinations. I thought maybe some subdued purples and greens would be a good match for the grey colour of the character and just wanted to keep the whole thing super soft and a little dreamlike. To fit with the feel, I decided to go for some wisteria-like flowers hanging from the top and these were created super quickly using the lasso tool to whip up the silhouettes. I made a few kind of unique bunches and then just kind of duplicated them and flipped the duplications, resized them and kind of recolored them to make them look a bit different from each other. And you kind of just do this a few times and kind of create this nice layered death effect. Um, I also just kind of blurred all of them just to keep the focus of the eye on the character. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This is the final finished piece and I really love how the fur turned out. It's really not too different of a technique to how I usually paint fur. It's just really changing the small uh, sharp watercolour brush for a flatter square brush to create the tufts of different shapes. And it really just kind of gives the fur a more organic and soft look and I'm really pleased with how it ended up turning out. Let me know what you think and if you give this method a try, let me know how it turns out. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe for more art videos and speed paints and I'll catch you all next time. Bye!